and welcome back to What's in the Pot Wednesday. Now you might be wondering, huh, there's usually another, more wonderful voice here introducing you. Where is she? Well, guess what? She's still at work. So, it's my... So, while she's at work, we both decided, let's not... Bleh. Let's have Tiny Pufferfish guide you on making a Boston cream pie while she also makes it for school. Okay, here we go. To first start off your Boston cream pie, you want to preheat your oven to 350 and prepare a 10 by 2 round cake pan by spraying the inside, putting a pan liner in, pressing it down, and then spraying Bring the pan liner itself. So we have that all nice and prepped and just sitting waiting for the batter. Now for the batter you will need six eggs. I'm sorry for not having it prepped already. I was waiting till the oven preheated to start the video. So there's one. Uh, plate. Yeah. Let me just fix you so you can see. Two. Three. It don't matter if the yolk is broken or not. That comes, that becomes important later, but right now, nah. Four. Five. Oh. That got stuck in there. So just... Get the shell out and and six. One, two, yeah. Since the one the yolk is broken. Okay, let me just wash my wash my hands real fast. Okay. Next you'll want to take eight ounces of sugar which is roughly one and a half cups of sugar. And just pour it in there. As well as a pinch of salt. And you are going to want to whisk, I forgot what this was. Some of the stuff that's already done out of the way. Whisk it till it's come back. Hopefully you have some sort of cooking thermometer. You're going to want to turn that on. And let's scooch on over to the oven. Okay. No burner never got any love, so let's use that. You're simply going to heat the mixture until it reaches 100 degrees. And not too little or not too much. 
Um, that's going down. I'm going to quickly... I realize I should be holding it over the flame. So I'm grabbing... And there we go. Hundred degrees. Turn that off. Move this out of the way. Bring you guys back. Sorry for whiplash, anyone? And you're just <coughs> motherfucker. I forgot that was hot. Yeah, you're going to dump your egg mixture in here. To a mixer and yeah oh shit it was over low heat folks anyways you're going to beat, beat the mixture on high until it doubles in size Okay, our mixture has doubled in size and it's turned a nice pale yellow. And don't worry about me burning myself, that's natural. When it comes to me. Okay. And then... Let you guys get a closer look. We are now going to sift. We are going to sift five ounces of flour into our mixture while holding it in. Folding it in will help create air bubbles, which 
I believe is essential for sponge cakes. Also, disclaimer, I have never made a sponge cake. I asked Jonathan if he remembered how he made sponge cake when he was in culinary school. He did not. So if this works, it works. If it doesn't, well, that's why it's called madness. But yeah. It, you should be warned that it was supposed to be low heat. That you were supposed to put the mixture on. Not high heat. I misread. It was too late. Look, I'm not even. Look, if you come here for perfection. Well why are you here? There's no perfection. There's no perfection. Sorry, I just kind of bumped you. Good thing I put a little more than five ounces in the bowl when I started. Okay. Let's just put those in there and some in anyways. So, so far your batter should be looking like this. Next you'll need to fold in a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Once that is all folded in, pour the mixture into the pan and immediately place it in the oven for 35 minutes. So I will do that and when we come back, we actually, you know what, let's just stay on here. Which hand so you guys can see? Okay, and there we go. Move you back. D 
give me one second. I am putting this stuff in. Okay. So wait for 35 minutes and we'll be back. Okay. The timer is done and I already misplaced the... Oh, there it is. He ought to admit. Let's take the cake out and put it on a cooling rack for 15 minutes. I need another. Were you going to try to take it out with one? Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm here to supervise now. <laughs> I wouldn't have caught it. <laughs> Not until you screamed. Oh, I already burned myself today. Here's how it looks. You're gonna want to set that onto a cooling rack for 15 minutes. And in the meantime, I will quickly get set up to make the pastry cream and meet you back here. Welcome back. Still getting the pastry cream set up, but in the meantime, 15 minutes have passed, so we're turning the cake onto a cake board and returning it to the rack. And now we're on to the pastry cream recipe. So let me just turn you back over here and make sure everything looks good. There we go. So now we're going to turn the stove back on and pour 16 fluid ounces of milk, which is a little over two cups. I still kind of hate how they put the measurements in this recipe. <laughs> Into a saucepan and wait for it to scale. As it's scaling, we can place two egg yolks. Get in there. That's good enough. Pull another egg. Oh, pour a quart cup of sugar in there and pour the remaining sugar into here. Now we've got a whisk again. I need a larger whisk. So we're bringing Why are the whisks all over the place? I do not know. And six tablespoons of cornstarch. That's what I forgot. And just whip this until it's pale yellow and fluffy.
It's an arm workout. Okay. That looks like it's starting to put good. Got it. Okay, and now we temper the egg yolk mixture with hot milk in a small stream while whisking it at the same time. kind of hard to do both at the same time, but nothing is ever perfect here. Now is it, Mom? Nope. Let me just bring you in a little bit closer to you so you can see what it looks like. Okay, and now for the fun part. And hopefully I don't burn myself this time. Should we take bets? <laughs> take bets now. <laughs> Place your bets. Will she burn herself? I say yes. Of course you would say yes. You're my daughter, I know you. Yeah. I know, I tripped earlier today. Okay. So, once again, turn a burner on. Okay, let's try. And put it on low heat. And for about three minutes, it's, it's basically suggesting I need three arms for this. I will have to hold the bowl over low heat, whisking constantly and rotating the bowl for about three minutes until the mixture begins to foam. Well, it's already kind of foamy, but still. So... I should state real fast that you should have a large bowl with equal parts ice and water prepared off to the side of the oven. I do have one prepared so I there we go. So I'm going to stop stirring once that 
says 'Cause I was whisking a lot. Unsalted butter. Unsalted 
Yeah. Cool. We're using salted anyways. <laughs> And two teaspoons vanilla extract. So one, two, three, four. That's two tablespoons. Nor am I counting a four. I was using a half tablespoon. I made a different variation for your birthday one year. Nothing electronics on it. Okay. Oop. You want to keep stirring until this is cold. I'm going to pause right here and get back to you guys once this is all nice and cold. Welcome back. Right now we are about to start both the rum syrup and the chocolate glaze. So since I have the chocolate glaze more set up, let's start there. Start, you'll want two ounces of unsweetened chocolate and two ounces of bitter sweet chocolate. If necessary, chop it into small, even-sized pieces. I'm just leaving them in chip form because they're small and even size. Place the chocolate in a clean, dry, stainless steel bowl. The appropriate size to fit into a saucepan with one inch of hot water at the bottom. And that's been prepped already. Place the saucepan over a low heat and melt the chocolate, stirring constantly. There we go. Low heat. Wait for that to warm up before we start stirring. For the rum syrup, we will combine two ounces of sugar and a quarter cup water into a smaller saucepan. You're going to want that. Oil. A little 
we'll bring it to a boil and let it boil for one minute. Chocolate over here is starting to get warm, so we'll just finally start stirring it to make it help it melt. You want this on a low heat to help it gradually melt instead of it melting and starting to burn the chocolate while it's melting. Making sure that it stays together. Okay. So now that it's boiling, we just go that boil for one minute. more seconds. Starting to melt some more. See, now it's getting all nice and melty. When do we have the liquor? And I'm letting it.
Okay. Now that the chocolate is all nice and melted, we stir in corn syrup, sugar, rum, and vanilla. Okay. Corn syrup, you're going to need two tablespoons of light corn syrup. And I'll be honest, I still do not know the difference between light and normal. this gets all stirred in and not burning the chocolate of sugar <laughs> I forgot how many tablespoons of rum Four tablespoons. <laughs> Look at that, four tablespoons. Continue to mix. Then for the flavor. Two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. And there's your chocolate glaze. We're just gonna keep this on the low heat until we are fully ready to use. While stirring occasionally.
enjoy the run sooner. We just need to add in a little bit of rum and stir. Just a little. <laughs> Cost for one tablespoon, but we added a little bit more. we have all parts of our Boston cream pie ready to be assembled. Okay. So let me go get the pie. Liner off, we don't need that anymore. Stirring the ganache. I keep calling this a ganache. I'm so used to making a ganache, not a glaze. Is there even a difference? I don't think so. To be honest, I think it's the same thing. Okay. Really. Turn the heat off that. Now we will use a long serrated knife, which that's too small. In the drawer. We are going to use just drizzle part of the rum syrup onto both layers. Remembered our pastry cream. It's now time to kind of glob it on there.
finish. Though we're not expecting perfection. Always. Well, always expect perfection. I'm not a baking god or whatever, Mom. <laughs> mm. Hell, if I was, I would be opening a bakery, not studying for game design. <laughs> okay. That looks even to me. We then plop our top half. On. Don't worry, my hands are clean. And then the final part are warm blades. Over the top. Okay. How's it looking, Dad? Looks nice. He was just walking by, so I asked him. Make sure you can get it everywhere you can. Always cover the top first. Or hell, you can do the sides first if that's your discretion. Your prerogative. I realize I accidentally took some off of here. And there we go. Now the last step is to let it cool for about 10 minutes to allow the glaze to set up. So we'll see you then. Here we are everybody. It's been about an hour for it to have been chilled. And now, time to slice in. <laughs> what? It's just, I think it's funny when you try to cut a cold cake. And not just you, anyone. Okay, that dishwasher is quite loud. Yes, that's a perfect size. That's perfect. That's a pecky size. Here you are. That is going to turn out okay. Okay, ready? 
Get a piece. Where are we? We got our piece. Dink it. Dink. Mmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. Very fresh. Oh, I did just cook it from scratch. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like it. I hope everyone enjoyed the madness. <laughs> I keep forgetting how this intro outro goes. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.